recommend um, um, these capacitive EMG electrodes. Uh, they confer advantages over, you know, standard contact electrodes. Um, supposedly there's supposed to be noise reduction. Um, there's also the advantage of, you know, you don't have to do all the isolation circuitry since you're not actually putting any current to the subject. Because because these the, the electrodes are built on custom circuit boards that are actually inside of a plastic bag, mm -hmm. right? So there's absolutely no contact exactly. with metal. You do have a you have a uh, a wet ground electrode up here, but that's the only connection. That's so the only connection, so there's no possible and that's fine. Flow. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, these are roughly like one inch squared. So the calculated capacitance given a dielectric for these plastic bag, anywhere between one to three. Mm -hmm. That's the average for the plastic bags, so and the thickness around you would say forty to fifty micron. These cap the capacitance on these are roughly two hundred and fifty picofarads, which is oh, small. Which is actually, uh, we found in the literature, and it, it turns out to be right on. So it, it so there's, there's specific requirements, and if, if it's anywhere between 150 to 300, you're like... Okay, you're okay. and now, so now over here we're looking at, uh, we have the, 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 you're going through some preamps, and then into a, uh, a NIDAC, for, a National Instruments NIDAC, and then up to MATLAB here. So we're looking at the MATLAB trace, and... Uh, so now it's just for like... Now it doesn't like me. <laughs> as soon as you came, let's see if I can. So you're on. What, what muscle are you on there? You're on tricep. Okay. Suddenly. You, okay. Okay. So now we're getting we're getting a signal which is a, based upon grip there, right? But there was we can get a better signal. Usually we okay, can get a better. Okay. So make the motion again. Yeah. That's what you were doing is spreading your fingers yeah. like that, and you're getting a signal there. Let me try it. It's okay, so very now you, specific to where it wants to be. Now, I wouldn't have said there's very much muscle right there. But what's really, so this is something that we found really interesting. So there's got to be a certain distance between these guys. Uh -huh. Like if they, if we, we, and this is all trial and error. Like if we have them come too close together, we see that we get lesser of a signal, right? Or sometimes more noise because we do see some kind of crosstalk between these two. Um, Something else that we notice is that if we press too hard against, like if it's really tight, you don't get anything. Like if That's it's weird, really, it? really, really, really tight. How would you make of that? Um, what I think it's happening is I feel like maybe it's just constricting like the muscle. Like if you just oh, you think that, it's a, you think it's a physiological effect rather than an yeah. electrical effect. Yeah. So but there like, is there is a signal there. No, but we we. We, I mean, in the, in the documentation, we got like specific signals for each finger, and that they're like it's you could, much, you could get. We yeah, we, we were able okay. to get them yesterday. So we were able to like, for instance, one thing that was really interesting is that this finger, this middle finger, seems to because it's if you move it, it's not independent of the other the other ones, right? right? So if you take a look at the waveform, it has two peaks. So it seems to be like probably like a like an overlay of two different. Oh, so you think there's a, 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 an electrical coupling between the muscles, and that's yeah. why it's not independent. That's, yeah, it doesn't as have like one As opposed to a mechanical peak. coupling. Yeah, it doesn't have like one peak alone. It has like two peaks. Okay. So we were able to test all the fingers except for this one. But let's okay. see if we can get like a nicer waveform output. Yeah. Let me, uh, right. Let okay, me so did you want to talk a little bit about analysis? Well, on the MATLAB side. So basically what we do in MATLAB is um, we have a 60 hertz notch filter to get rid of the um, noise from the electric circuit and um, we limit the EMG signal from 10 Hertz to 80 Hertz. 10 Hertz is a high pass cutoff because um, the ECG signals are from 0.5 Hertz to 15 Hertz so we didn't want to get interference mm -hmm. from ECG signals. Now for EMG signals it can go as high as 300 Hertz but when looking at the frequency domain we kept seeing um, certain noise peaks at 80 Hertz and 200 Hertz so we decided to limit the EMG signal to, to 80 hertz. Um, we, we tried using notch filters to get rid of um, the other noise in the 200 hertz, but then it kept changing its location. So yeah. okay, we have a better signal now. Okay, so now now what are you doing? You're, you're flexing your fingers. My whole hand. This you hold it, whole it's whole hand, hand and you're getting a, a really good response there. Yeah. Can you do one finger now? Let me try to do my index finger. Index finger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, index that's finger. index finger. Thumb. Give me this. Some different thing. 
Pinky. Pinky is much different. I tried doing the middle one. That was hard. See the two peaks? You get like two. You haven't had practice? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, but then that's for the middle. That's what we, we see that response for like the middle finger. Those mm -hmm. two peaks mm -hmm. separated by roughly the same distance. So we do have that as part of okay, the Okay, so do the whole hand again. There's a whole hand. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, after after the notch filter comes the low pass filtering and high pass filtering. And we save the last four hundred milliseconds of the one second buffer and we append it to the current buffer so when we filter the transients would be out of the screen so we get a more continuous waveform. Okay. Have you done any work with uh, recognition yet of trying to identify? We tried. Right. We can show him the GUI. Yeah. Why don't we, we show him the GUI? Yeah. So, so we, we tried it with the, with, the, with the pinky and thumb finger but there is some confusion out there and we are not able to completely differentiate. Like when we have pinky, pinky is constant but when we move thumb, uh, still we can see the pinky. So there's some kind of uh, crosstalk again there. So. We're doing so, a neural network, right, Roland? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're so you're the what's the input to the neural net? Right. So the neural network we first had to we, we first had to train the network. It's a simple um, probabilistic neural network in MATLAB. It has two layers. The second layer has some bias. So basically, we we had to get training set data for each finger. We got five signals for each finger, except um, except the ring finger because it's it's hard to move the ring finger. So we just ignored right. it. So basically, we trained a neural network, and we kept um, we kept experimenting with the spread. So the spread basically sets the bias in the second layer, and it, it wasn't working. But if, if it worked, it would change color. The, 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 the button on each finger would change color depending on which finger you move. Okay, so, so that's that's work to be done yet. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you yeah. can try moving. So we this have yeah. so currently we have like yeah. two electrodes so. as a differential. Mm -hmm. So I think if we have like multiple electrodes, we'll be able to differentiate the fingers yeah. more efficiently. The okay. problem that we saw was the crosstalk. Yeah. So we initially had another set, which is right over there. And the problem we were seeing is that these signals were definitely coupled. So one of them was following the other one. So at that point, we decided to just get mm -hmm. rid of that. Okay. Um, so, I mean, all the wiring and this kind of a bird's nest over here is not going to alleviate that. It's not going to help alleviate that. So. One thing to consider would be, well, of course, we'd be having them done like on the actual PCBs, but also making them wireless mm -hmm. would be okay. another thing to consider. Okay. Uh, because unless we can get more, unless we can get like more data off other points, it's going to be really hard to be able to like distinguish one specific finger right. from the other. Okay.